so let's go through this first word problem and then we'll step it up and see what happens when things get a little bit more difficult. When an auto dealer's markup over factory price is X dollars per car, the dealer sells 300 minus two thirds X cars per month. For what value of X will the profit be the greatest? Obviously we need to come up with an equation and clearly our profit is going to be based on, let's say, this is way too big. So let's say we have P of X. We're going to take the amount of money for each car, right? Or I'll write it on words, price per unit. times the number of units sold. And that will equal how much we're making. So like, let's say a car is $100, which it's not, and then we sold three cars, we're gonna make $300, right? All right, well, the price per unit they told us is X dollars. So we're gonna have, why is everything super? So we're gonna have X times the number of units sold, which is right here. The dealer sells 300 minus two thirds X cars. So that's the number of units sold, 300 minus two thirds X. Okay, now we're asking for what value of X will the profit be the greatest? We're going to actually put this into our calculator and we're going to find our maximum point of the graph. So let's go through. You don't actually have to even distribute this. And if you want to, you can distribute this X in. But I'm going to show you how you can just put this into the calculator just like this. So let's pull up our calculator. I assume standard because I've been doing things in other classes. Okay. And let's enter this in. So what you want to type in is X and then times. I always do the multiplication sign. Sometimes you don't need it, but sometimes you do. And I never know when we do or don't need it. So I always just put it. So X times, and now we're going to open our parentheses and you do need the parentheses. And we're going to write in that binomial 300 minus, and now two thirds. So you're going to do two division sign three. Oh, that should actually be in parentheses. Sorry. Let's do parentheses minus parentheses two divided by three to show that that's a fraction altogether, two thirds. And then we're going to do times X again. So the multiplication sign and X. And then we're going to close our parenthesis. All right. Then once you have that all typed in, you're going to go to graph. Nothing's really showing for us, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So we need to fix the window on this graph. Let's go ahead and figure out the window we're going to use. This is going to be the hardest part for you guys is trying to figure out your own window because I'm not going to give it to you. So let's think about this. We have our X window and our Y window. So we have X max or sorry, X min. Let's just do the windows so we can put it all together, windows. Okay, we got to figure out between what two numbers. Well, X represents the, dollar, uh, the dollars per car. Are we ever going into the negatives? We're never going into the negatives. So my minimum for X will be zero. And now this is a guess and check scenario, right? So it's X dollars per car. Who knows? Let's say, let's start off with, we're making a profit of $200 per car. Let's start off with that. And we're just going to see. 
So then where does that take us? That takes us to the Y window. So similar to the X, if X is zero, we're going to start Y is zero. We're not going to sell negative. We're not going to end up with negative money here. So we're going to say Y is zero. And now we want to talk about um, the Y max. Well, if it B of X, Y, right? So this is Y would equal this whole thing. Well, think about what's really going on here. Because this X will get multiplied with this X, right? So that's an X squared. So we could, it's not going to be this, but let's say this was 200. We're potentially doing 200 squared, right? That's a really big Y. I know where that we're going to subtract that 300 X from that also. So you can also look at this as like 300 times 200. Um, let's pick a really high number. What are you thinking? Should we do 60,000 or do we want to go lower? Do we want to try like, you tell me, what do you guys want to try? What's popping in your head? You don't care? All right, let's start with 10,000 just to show you. Let's say you picked a smaller number. Let's say you started with 10,000. Let's see what happens there. So like I said, this is all sort of guess and check. So now our window, our, we go to um, window on our calculator. Our X min is zero. Our X max we said was, I don't know, we just guessed at 200. We might have to make that bigger. Our Y min was zero and our Y max was a thousand. What happened? Oh, sorry, 10,000. You're right. We're getting better, right? It doesn't just look like a line on the y-axis anymore. But have I gone enough? No, I haven't got enough. So we have to open this up more. So I'm going to increase my x max. Let's go 500. Let's increase our y max. We did 10,000. I don't know. Do 40,000. Do we see this now? Okay, so now we want to know our maximum. So we're going to go and find our maximum on the graph, our highest point. So who remembers how to do that on the graph, how to find our maximum or our upper bound? Michael? Yeah. You got it. So left bound, we're going to go to the left of this. Right bound, let's go to the right. Yes, yes. All right, so then this is going to be, um, what was it asking? For what value of X will the profit be the greatest? Well, this is 224.9999, so that's really gonna round to 225. 225. So even if I say do three decimal places, if I say do three decimal places, but it's like something like this where you have to round to the whole number, you could just give the whole number. That's fine. I'll be okay with that. All right. So what value of X? The value of X will be 225. Or X max, we should say. Max X. All right, what is the maximum profit? Well, didn't we say P of X was the profit? So P of X is our Y, right? So what we're doing is we're trying to find when it says what is the maximum profit, what Y corresponds with this X. So let's go back to our calculator and what Y corresponds with this X, 33,750. our max profit that we can make. Okay, so it's really nice when the problems come in one variable. 
when the problems come in one variable similar to this, everything was thought of in terms of x. Um, we, we just get our equation, we plug in, put it into the calculator, find our max or min, and you're done. It's that simple. But sometimes you're going to get equations that come in two different variables. And I have a series of steps for you to follow when it comes in multiple, well, in two variables. So how to approach more complicated max min problems. Are we ready for the steps? Step number one, draw a diagram. Step number two, you want to identify the formulas you want to use. Step three, figure out what the constraint is using the given information. Identify max or min. And then we're going to write down the formulas. One formula will include the constraint. And you'll understand what this all means once we do a problem. The other formula will be what you want to maximize or minimize. There's more. Um, okay, so now we're going, um, we want to maximize or minimize. Okay, use the formula with the constraint. to solve for one of the variables. And then you're going to use what you got from number six to substitute in sub into the formula you want to max or min so you are dealing with only one variable. I ran out of space, so I went into the next problem. Two more steps. We want to graph the expression from number seven
and then we're going to find the max or min. Is anybody still writing? Okay, let's do a problem. And I'll explain all those steps as we're doing the problem. So number two, it reads, a farmer needs to have a rectangular area bordered on one side of a river. He needs to fence three sides and create 180,000 square feet of grazing land for his herd. What dimensions should the rectangle have to use the least amount of fencing? So question for you, it's saying the least amount of fencing. So is this a maximum or a minimum? This is going to be a minimum, so we'll keep that in our heads. So go back to our steps. Step number one says draw a diagram. So let's see what's going on here. A farmer needs to have a rectangular area bordered on one side of a river. So I have my river and then we are going to make a rectangular fence on the other side around it. He needs to fence three sides, right? He needs to fence three sides, one, two, three, why? Because the last side is the river. Um, he needs to fence three sides and create 180,000 square feet of grazing land for his herd. What does that 180,000 represent? He needs to create 180,000 square feet of grazing land for his herd. What does that 180,000 represent? Sorry. Yeah, the area, put those two together, the inside of the fence, which is the area inside that fence. So we know our area is 180,000. What dimensions should the rectangle have to use the least amount of fencing? Well, do we agree in a rectangle, the opposite sides are congruent? So I don't know either, right? So if this is X, then this is X because they're congruent. But can I also call the bottom X? No, what should I call it? Y, right? Because I don't know what it is, but it can't be X. So I'm going to call it a different variable. All right, go back and read again. A farmer needs to have a rectangular area bordered on one side of a river done. He needs to fence three sides and create 180,000 square feet of grazing land. This is the formula with our constraint, 180,000 square feet of grazing land for his herd. What does that mean? We are constricted on our area. We do not have an unlimited amount of area to use. So that is the formula that has the constraint. So we know area is equal to of a rectangle length times width. Do we agree? But now our area is constricted. We have a constraint on it. So our area has to be 180,000 square feet. So we have 180,000 square feet is going to equal our x times y, right? All right, now it's saying what dimension should the rectangle have to use the least amount of fencing? So now we need another formula for our minimum, the least amount of fencing. Well, do we agree the least amount of fencing means I need a length here, I need some fence here, and I also need some fence here? What is that? What is this? So the area was the inside. What are we trying to find the least amount of? The perimeter, very good. We have to find the least amount of the perimeter. Am I counting that fourth side in the perimeter? No. So now we're gonna say the perimeter that we're trying to find is going to be X plus X plus Y. So the perimeter is going to be two X plus Y.
So let's go through this. We have our formula that has the constraint in it, right? The 180,000 is our constraint. Then we have the formula for what we want to, in this scenario, minimize. We want to minimize the fencing that we need to close off this area. So now the next step we had said was use the formula with the constraint and solve for one of the variables. Does it matter which variable you solve for? No. I'm going to solve for y. I'm going to solve for y. It does not matter which one you solve for. I like to solve for y because everything's usually in terms of x. So it's just easier to have an x there. So what I'm going to do is in order to solve for y, I'm going to divide by x. So then we end up with y is equal to 180,000 divided by x. All right, now what did I say? I said, once you said it, okay. Once you have this, once you have one variable in terms of the other variable, we're gonna now go to the formula that we wanna maximize or minimize. And wherever I see a y, now I'm going to substitute in 180,000 over x. So now this isn't going to just be p anymore. This is going to be the perimeter in terms of x. So I'm going to call this p of x. And p of x is going to be 2x plus 180,000 over x. And this is what we're going to put in our calculator. But guess what we're going to have to figure out again? Our window. The worst part is figuring out the windows. So let's try to play around here. It's a guess and check scenario. So do we all still agree we're not going into negatives here? So we could start at zero for our window for mm -hmm. x. Okay, and now we need some idea of an x value. Um, it's obviously going to be pretty big since the area is 180,000. Does that make sense? Because our area is so big, and to get this area, we're multiplying our x and our y. They have to be fairly large, very large numbers, right? So let's just take a guess. Choose a large number that you want to just play around with your starting point. If this was you on your own on the test, where would you want to start? Yeah. Oh, that's really big because if this were 200,000, that's already bigger than the area. So that doesn't work to do 200,000 times y. That will give us 180,000. So that's, a, that's too big. A thousand? Does that sound like it works? One thousand? Let's try a thousand. And now let's go to our Y. Well, if our X is our thousand, our Y is going to be 180,000 divided by a thousand, right? So where does that bring us? What would you say? Okay, let's try 18,000. All right, are we ready? So first we fix our window. Our max we're saying is a thousand. Our y is eighteen thousand, and we might need to adjust this. We're not sure. And now we hit graph. Oh, did I not do the eighteen? Oh, I didn't plug it into the calculator. Okay, sorry. Let's go back and plug this in. So we can plug in exactly how it's written. So this is going to be 2 times x plus 
Now we need parentheses because we're using the division sign to represent a fraction. So we're going to do parentheses 180,000 divided by, so division sign, x, and close our parentheses. Do we all have that? All right, now we will graph. All right, do we have a minimum here? Yeah, we absolutely have a minimum. So, yes. What happened? just to zoom it in a little bit more, but it will still work. Okay, so let's go find our minimum. It looks like our minimum looks right around here, right, before it starts going up again. So it looks like our minimum's right around there before it starts going up again. So let's do second uh, calculator. Ooh, what happened? Second calculator minimum. So what's this minimum going to be? Our x. Three, well, it's it's our x, right? 300, because it's 299.999999. So it is 300. So our minimum is 300 for our x. Let's go back here. So it says, what are the dimensions should the rectangle be? Okay, so our dimensions are x and y, right? So our x should be 300. And isn't our y going to be 180,000 divided by 300? So now our y is going to be 180,000 divided by 300, which is 600. These are our dimensions. Yes. So the Y would represent the perimeter at that minimum. No, so the whole perimeter. Because remember, our Y is P of X. And P of X represents the whole perimeter. So if we want a minimum, that will be the perimeter that corresponds to that minimum. Does that make sense? You don't get what? I didn't know. It's, I'm trying to get back to the, is this part the better one? Like, yeah, where it looks almost a little flat before it goes up. Because I put it in the like, like, two and the two. Right here, like okay. the minimum right before it starts to go up. On the test, everything will be like a clear minimum, a clear maximum. There won't be like any gray areas. All right, are we ready for the next one? All right, a 40 inch wire is split into two pieces so that one piece is bent into a square and the other into a circle. Find the length of each piece so that the area is a minimum. All right, so we know we're gonna find the minimum. Now let's go back. A 40 inch wire is split into two pieces. Right. Um, one piece is a square, the other is a circle. So what should I draw? A square and a circle. Now what does this 40 represent? 
What does this 40 represent? That represents the length of the wire, right? And then that 40 was split, that, that length of the wire. We didn't get more wire to do this. So we took that wire and we split it into two different things. And then we took that wire and we made a square out of it, but then we also took that wire and made a circle out of it. So if I add the perimeter of the square and the circumference of the circle, shouldn't that give me back 40? So let's do that. So we're gonna have perimeter of the square plus the circumference of the circle. Oops. Circumference of the circle is going to equal 40. All right, this is going to be our equation with the constraint. Find the length of each piece so that the area is a minimum. But it's not just the area of one, it's the total area. So I'm gonna find the area of the square plus the area of the circle. So we're gonna say total area is equal to the area of the square plus the area of the circle. Okay, so now we got our two formulas. Now we sort of have to try to find things to plug into them. Do I know any lengths of the square? No, but do we know in a square all sides are congruent? So is it safe if I call all of the sides x? And now for both circumference and area of a circle, what is it always based on? What is the most important part of a circle? The radius and the diameter, exactly. So for me, I'm gonna just work with the radius. So my radius is R. All right, so to find the perimeter of a square, do we agree it's four times one side? and the circumference of a circle is two pi r. So we're gonna have four x plus two pi r equals 40. All right, so now we have a choice. Um, we either solve for x or we solve for r. If we wanted to change the r to a y, could we? Would you feel better if I changed it to a y or it doesn't matter? You would feel better? Okay, I'll change it to a Y. Let's change it to Y. All right, before we solve for any of them, let's just go to the total area. I forgot about that. So the total area of a square, isn't it one side squared? And then the area of a circle is pi r squared. So now we're going to have our total area is going to be x squared plus pi y squared. All right, now let's go back to the area with to the word problem, um, sorry, the formula with the constraint. Isn't the first one the formula with the constraint? And we're gonna solve for one of the variables. Let's just go ahead and solve for y. So keep everything in terms of x, does that work? All right, if I solve for y, that means I have to get everything to the other side. If I solve for y, that means everything has to go to the other side. So I'm going to subtract that 4x, so I'm gonna have 40 minus 4x, But then what should I also do now? I have to solve for y. Divide by 2 pi. So y is equal to 40 minus 4x over 2 pi. Does anybody see anything I can do here with that 40 minus 4x over 2 pi? Somebody new, somebody different. Perry. Can you do like uh, pi by two? Yeah, we can pull out a two, right? So we can simplify this down. So this becomes 
y is equal to 20 minus 2x over pi. What am I going to do with this 20 minus 2x over pi? Well, we take out the 2's and we just still get it in here. Yeah, we divided it out. So what are we going to do with this 20 minus 2x over pi? We'll plug it into this y over here. So we're going to have a is equal to x squared plus pi times 20 minus 2x over pi squared. I'm going to take this a little tiny bit further, but not much further. And I'm going to make this into x squared plus pi times... 20 minus 2x squared over pi squared. I just gave that exponent to the numerator and the denominator. I do, but we're in the middle of a very difficult lesson. Can you come to me at the end? Sure. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So now let's keep going here. Why did I do that? Why did I give that exponent to the numerator and the denominator? Because can I simplify down these pies? So when I simplify down these pies, this one will cancel and then I'll just be left with a pie in the denominator. So we are at the area is equal to x squared plus the quantity of 2 minus 2x two squared over pi. This hideous thing is what we're going to be putting into our calculator. Are we ready for it? Okay. Go to our calculator. Okay. So we have x squared. It was x squared, right? Yeah. Okay. Plus, now we open our parentheses. And then I'm going to open parentheses again. And we're going to do 20 minus 2. I always do times. X. Close our parentheses. And square that. And then division sign. Oh, not multiplication sign, division sign, pi. The way you get pi is you do the second button and then that little up arrow. Can you see that, the second up arrow? That's what we're going to do there. Second up arrow will give us the pi. Second up arrow. And now you close those major parentheses. And now we hit graph. We got to, oh, we didn't figure out the window. Okay. So for the window here, I'm going to tell you, just to speed things up, we'll do oh, 0 to 100. Just want to show you real quick. And then the y max is 10,000. And then it shows us our minimum. OK. Um, we only had two more problems to do. No. Uh, did I have two more problems to do? One, two, three. Okay, so we might need another day of word problems. We might need another day of word problems. So no homework and test gets everything gets pushed back one day. Everything gets pushed back one day. Well, isn't that kind of, um, that's kind of good for the people who weren't here? Yeah, they'll get a day with me. That's true. Um, so new date for the test. We said Tuesday, Wednesday before, so it'll be Wednesday, Friday, because you dropped Thursday. Oh, I found my calculator. It was here. <laughs> okay, good.